our software. Welcome today to our software workshop, our TVS software workshop. Um, thank you so much for all of your work and interactions yesterday. It seemed like things were very lively indeed, uh, which really warms my heart. Um, let me uh, share the schedule for today. Um, like I was saying, I put a link in the chat to the current, um, to the webpage for the current event, for this current workshop. And let me just share the screen with you as I look at the schedule. So what we have today on deck, um, all the, um, the recording from yesterday and the earlier recording that had been provided by the software teams are available through content. And if you go to the agenda, you see what's on deck today. Um, and we start with um, a participatory session where I would like to hear from the breakout rooms. Um, if you can give a quick summary of what happened yesterday. Uh, we wanna discuss the link um, organization and how we can interface with it after that. And um, we do have, we do want to leave some time for an unconference style um, um, section session in between this discussion of link and the breakout discussion to see what's missing from this conference, uh, from this workshop. Uh, what can we add today? And if not, what can we add um, at the next workshop and how we should start thinking about the next workshop? What's the most useful um, plan for that? And the rest is just breakout section in formal, in formal interactions. And we would like to hear break, back from the breakout rooms, um, although this is pushing into the third hour of the workshop. And we did say that this is a free form um, time. So um, we will see at that point whether it's enough people are around to be worth going back to Zoom or not. Does that make sense? Cool. So. I would like to invite the people that were in the breakout rooms um, to um, report what they did. Since it's only 23 people, I actually would like to do that. Um, I would like everybody to speak about what breakout rooms they participated in and what, um, what the discussion was if they were here yesterday. So I will actually call you if you don't mind. I will roll call you in the order in which you appear on my screen but reversed so that I don't punish those who showed up early for the, for the meeting. Um, so I'm gonna start from the bottom. Again, um, the question is what breakout rooms you participated in. Um, if you have a prepared something to discuss, if you were leading the format room, a breakout room, um, please share that with us. If not, even just a quick impression about um, who you talk to and how, and whether it was helpful and what was helpful about it would be great. So I'm going to start with uh, Vittorio Braga, if you don't mind. Yes, I'm here. Uh, Fed, oh, sorry. before we go on, I see a question. I what? saw that, yes. Uh, just one second, Vittorio. Uh, Dragana. Ah, um, uh, sorry, uh, Fad and Rita. Um, uh, I uh, I was wa I wanted to suggest that maybe as a, because we were like making notes of the of yeah. our breakout uh, room, maybe we should like uh, would it be okay to just like present a summary of all discussion and then people could add on, or you were thinking that everyone should give their own sort of summary. Uh, so I was thinking that everybody would say what they got out of the breakout okay. rooms. But I did ask, you know, I did tell people to sort of prepare. So I imagine that those who were running the breakout room will have a more comprehensive overview. And they're gonna thank you so much for actually sharing notes from the room. I just wanna make sure that everybody else also feels sort of empowered to say what they got out of it and, okay. um, and feels comfortable and know that, you know, it doesn't have to be formal, it doesn't have to be comprehensive and it's not going to be formal or comprehensive for everybody. Does that make sense? Thank yeah. you. Vittorio. So, hi. Uh, just, uh, I need to ask, since uh, I joined uh, uh, really one mm -hmm. minute ago, uh, uh, it's my turn for what? <laughs> yes, it's just your turn to tell us which breakout room you were in and how did it go yesterday in those breakout rooms. Very, okay. uh, doesn't have to be comprehensive. Um, just what were your impressions? Okay, I was uh, in uh, Angelka, Angelka's room, and mm -hmm. 
I followed uh, the all the discussion on this uh, on this particular method of uh, detecting the signal uh, over the red noise, if I understood correctly. By um, sorry for context and for everybody. So this is the periodicity detection variability software breakup room. <laughs> Thank you. Please carry on. Yeah, uh, to detect signal, I was saying above. Uh, uh, or within uh, the red noise uh, and uh, this interesting way of uh, what uh, this interesting way of uh, 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 inspecting the peaks of then uh, I really not sure if I understood what the, but the peaks of probability density within within a period period uh, uh, diagram now uh, I was thinking uh, whether uh, this uh, is uh, more, uh, uh, whether, whether this is more, uh, say, uh, whether this is optimal uh, for some kind of uh, variability uh, with respect to some, uh, some other kind. For example, if it is better for uh, semi-periodic uh, or uh, uh, or strictly periodic uh, variables or uh, uh, more sinusoidal or more irregular uh, or um, more, more irregular. Uh, I... Thank but yesterday, you. This, this, is, this is what I attended yesterday and uh, my thoughts. Very good, thank you. Just your impression and your thought. That was exactly what I wanted. Thank you so much. Um, I didn't give any guidance, but so, um, Vittorio did very, very nice in keeping it within like, you know, um, half a minute maybe, uh, just because it's over 20 people and we don't want to spend too much time here. So thank you. I very much appreciate it. And next on my screen is Jalong. Jalong, half a minute to tell us about your impression from the breakout rooms. Uh, I was, I was, uh... Then on the break room about uh, observing program manage management. Mm -hmm. yeah. And mm. what did you learn? And there, yeah, and there's there's a lot of stuff we need to build for the on the TVS website. Many functions still, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Awesome, thank you. So your impression is that there's a lot of work to do for that. That's great. <laughs> uh, Sarah is next. Yes, okay. Um, yeah, I initially uh, chatted with uh, Massimo D'Allora and uh, we were waiting at our own breakup rooms, but uh, in my case, for young stellar objects and for the classification of stars, as the our project uh, uh, is not yet found and will uh, start uh, at a later stage. As expected, uh, I didn't have any um, people <laughs> join my group break breakup room, so we decided to join the Angelica's one, which was very interesting. I won't go through the details. I for sure Angelica and Dragana will go through that. It was very helpful for us. And uh, in the main, meantime, we also focus on the Robin Science platform going a little bit of topic. Uh, Massimo and myself chatted about the, um, the availability of uh, data, in particular for force of photometry uh, from uh, brokers alerts uh, or uh, via the data release. I retrieve some information. Maybe you can confirm this, that uh, uh, it will be the case for um, the access through the Rubin Science platform, not through the alert, so not after 60 seconds, but every 24 hours. So we should not wait for the full data release. And uh, yeah, for the rest, it was very interesting to join uh, and to follow the tutorial uh, notebook uh, of uh, Angelica. Excellent. Um, thank you very much. Attila, you are up next. Uh, hi, my room that people visit, and uh, most of the time people. Attila, turn off your monitor. Turn off your camera because you're breaking up. Okay, now is it better? 
Yes, please. Thank you. Can, can you hear me? Uh, okay. Yes. Sorry. So, staying in my room the whole time, and three people visited us, and most of the time we were Which talking. Which room about was it? Can you remind us? Which Sorry? software? Which software? Can you remind us? Oh, the the machine learning classification. Thank you. So we were talking about the machine learning stuff, and most of the about uh, a reliable and uh, how to cross match your coordinates with ZTF data. And we discussed that there is no straight solution. And uh, we talked about some methods, unsupervised methods, and uh, Lovro mentioned we should do some kind of interactive class. And we, let's say we started the call to provide our classification results. So you were breaking up here and there. I think uh, I think I got the gist, and I'm looking at Rachel. It looks like she was taking notes. <laughs> we got most of it, but please look at the notes when we release them and make sure that we capture what you said effectively. Uh, let me ask you a question because Team Nyler, who is providing a cross match classification, uh, sorry, a cross match software as part of their in, the UK in kind contribution, was also at the meeting yesterday. And he reported that he didn't have anybody in his room, so he went to some other room. Was he by chance with you all? No, I, I, I think no. So I don't remember who he said he was with, but I do recommend that if you're talking about cross-matching, you connect uh, with, the, with that, um, with that in-kind contribution and that team, because that's the focus also of their, um, of their contribution, of the software contribution. OK, thank you. Excellent. Uh, Jan is up next. Uh, thanks, Fred. Um, can I share my screen or am I not allowed? Yes, you may. I've got, uh, OK, so let me just check share screen. I have to find it. Uh, and uh, let me add, if you are in a team with somebody and you want to report together, feel free to join. Right, so maybe Marcus will, uh, will add something. Can you see this? Uh, yes. I suppose, OK. All right, so we talked about, uh, we were at the Lacerta breakout room and we were talking about the OPM, the Observing Program Management System. Um, so this is essentially a web front-end to your own project database. There will be instances of this for each team. Um, so it will include ways to subscribe to broker alert streams and RSP um, data downloads via API methods. It will include ways to upload your own data, for example, if you have your own light curves um, that you would like to include there. Uh, it will interface with the DAS for data visualization, and uh, we aim to have a very lightweight design so that this should be able to run relatively fast. If applicable, if you have access to telescope resources, uh, for example, you know the uh, LCO telescopes that do have APIs, we can work with you to include those so that you can submit observations to your observing resources. Uh, and it will hopefully allow submission of data fitting requests via an API to super clusters. So the way we are going to approach this is we'll work with specific TVS members uh, to provide two sample OPM instances, which we'll demonstrate perhaps in the next workshop or the one after that. Um, <laughs> Uh, we want to collaborate with Anais, uh, we said, to figure out how to integrate the broker streams with the OPM. And uh, we have already uh, started working with Lovro and Alex um, to integrate uh, the data visualizer once it's developed, you know, to think about how, how we link the systems together. And with Tomislav, um, you know, we're getting advice on how, how should we actually, what kind of information should we submit to the super cluster and what kind of feedback should we get back from it to the OPM system through a, like an API interface. Uh, I don't know if Marcus wants to add anything or Lovro or Tomislav or anybody else. Please uh, feel free if anybody wants to add anything at this point or if they want to go next because it's super close and relevant. All good. Next up is Nina. Um, yeah, so um, I uh, yesterday looked especially into the breakout room from Andrelka because um, I'm very interested, especially in the periodicity 
uh, pipeline and um, despite I was not able to follow the uh, complete presentation by her, um, I uh, want to follow up on that and um, I'm in contact with her to uh, find out more about um, uh, yeah, the pipeline and the data products um, regarding my own breakout room as uh, as I mostly tried to watch the presentation from Andielka, I was not uh, present in my breakout room. All right, thank you. Uh, next up is Claudia. Okay. Well, uh, I was interested in more than one project actually yesterday, but finally decided to go to Angelka's room and uh, the presentation was uh, uh, terrific. And uh, I especially enjoyed to see um, the, the, the performance of the pipeline uh, with respect to different uh, uh, levels of intensity of the periodic signal with respect to the red noise and also with respect to sample and sampling of the light curves. And uh, I mean, I'm very interested because in my scientific case, I, it uh, sometimes happens that you have uh, uh, periods of periodic signals uh, in the light curve. Uh, so there are uh, transient uh, periodic signals. So wavelet analysis is really um, uh, the right way to proceed uh, to, to, to study this kind of uh, light curves. So Excellent. it was very useful, very interesting. Thank you so much. Uh, Dragana, you up next and you and Angelica were together, right? So if you want to like tag team, that's great. Uh, yeah, uh, we can uh, <clears throat> do it uh, together. So I didn't prepare the slide, but that was very nice from Yanis. Uh, very, uh, very nice. But we did, uh, we did, um, uh, we did um, the notes uh, which we can uh, share. I don't want to share the screen because that's a lot of information, but you can read it later on and. We can post it in the chat uh, and uh, and as well uh, as um, uh, share it later on. Uh, Rachel, you can freely share it uh, uh, to the uh, uh, to the community. So in our in our room, there was a really a lot of uh, discussion, and uh, I really want to thank and both on my side and Anjaka's side for all the people coming up, uh, asking questions and. Uh, uh, participate in the discussion because that was very beneficial for everyone. And I think uh, this kind of uh, interaction where we're having here, like all together, is very much uh, appreciated. And I think uh, there was also a comment from one of the participants that we should also meet up all together, like all the software developers and comment each other and help each other because we are doing uh, similar stuff and it's really helpful with the commenting. So not really like going in the breakup rooms all the time. Uh, and uh, so what uh, what we did basically we um, presented the the pipeline and Angelica showed the two user cases uh, basically based on uh, on uh, our light curves and as well of uh, light curve light curves uh, sent to us by the uh, uh, Polish in kind uh, team. I don't know whether Swayam is there. He was there yesterday, so I want to thank him for for uh, for sharing this with us. And uh, and uh, and we uh, uh, showed uh, these uh, two user cases uh, and discussed some details. Uh, and uh, later on, uh, following the, the some questions and discussion, Angelica basically stressed uh, what is the difference in the suggested pipeline with respect to the to the periodicity mining that uh, Rubin Science Platform will will, will be giving, uh, and which is more in the frequency domain, and ours is more uh, at the moment focused on the time domain uh, approach. And there was a lot of discussion related to the uh, to the to the speed of the code in terms of how 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 can it be how fast can it be uh, executed in terms of dealing with large number of light curves for example if it would be like millions of stars at the same time and uh, we discuss uh, a little bit um, uh, this and uh, further on uh, we uh, what we really uh, invited the community and this is something which would be very much important and also that Vittorio uh, mentioned in his comment is that we should test this on different science cases and especially basically having uh, the community sending us uh, different uh, uh, light curves with different nature and then this would be super useful in the direction and in the development of the code. Anjuka, do you want to follow up? 
if I can call her up, sorry. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you so much once again. Uh, thank you to all um, colleagues for feedback and really uh, interesting in, uh, interaction. And we would like to continue and also to have more interaction with, uh, uh, with Lovro and Yanis uh, related to their uh, in-kind contribution. Thank you. And also with uh, Claudia uh, related to Blazers. So thank you once again. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, next on my screen is, I'm so sorry, I don't, the name is, oh, uh, thank you, Danitra, you were not in a breakout room, so I'm going to skip you. So uh, sorry for not sending a heads up, but next, uh, Tomislav, you're up next. Well, hello. I hope you see me. Uh, yeah, I, I was also in Anjuka uh, room discussing on uh, periodicity mining uh, pipeline, and uh, I like this discussion very much. And uh, thanks to Anjuka, she really presented. Uh, she really gave, gave us a very nice presentation on the on the few cases that uh, they applied on their code, and uh, we got quite a lot uh, also about the, the code itself. And uh, later there was also a discussion regarding the Dash because the people from Dash <laughs> joined uh, the periodicity mining, mining uh, breakout room. So we had also a nice discussion on, on this on this part of the on this software. Excellent, um, Sally. Do you want to actually? Yeah, I see your point, Sally. Sally, do you want to go next? And I know that you told me you weren't able to join a breakout room, but do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, so yeah, as unfortunately I wasn't able to attend the breakout rooms, but the, thank you for including myself and my team. Uh, just as an introduction, I'm based in South Africa with the South African Astronomical Observatory, and I'm representing our um, LSST uh, team uh, based there. I'm very new in this, uh, this group, but uh, I just wanted to say it was wonderful hearing about all the different projects. Uh, yesterday, and I'm definitely going to be taking back all the links, the um, YouTube links back to my team, and hopefully we can start up discussions and, and see where the interest is there. And I'll also be taking back the two questionnaires, of course, and we'll put in our, uh, in, uh, our input there. So that's it. <laughs> that's great. Thank you so much. And so perhaps um, this is a very good point, even people that have not participated in the breakout room, this might be a chance for you to introduce yourself. So um, can I call on Victor? I had skipped you because you told me you weren't in a breakout room, but can I ask you to please introduce yourself very quickly? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, do you hear me? Yes. Uh, uh, thank you. I'm sorry, I missed uh, yesterday meeting, but I had the classes to teach, so I wasn't able to participate. Uh, but uh, this uh, this is very useful to me because I can hear uh, what uh, what I have missed uh, yesterday, and uh, I am a member of uh, Serbian in kind uh, proposal team, of, uh, which uh, is based on periodicity mining, uh, along with uh, Angelka and uh, Dragana, and I'm happy to to collaborate uh, with all of you in the in the future. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Dani Chow, do you want to introduce yourself? I had skipped you as well. And sorry for, I keep calling you Dani Chow. I'm not sure uh, I can sp split the name into. <laughs> oh, I'm Danny. Yeah. Hi, Danny. my last name. <laughs> I just have to make sure. Yeah, uh, I'm a postdoc working with uh, Lovro uh, at the uh, uh, Roger Poshkovich Institute. And I am mostly interested in uh, lens transient, lens variability, quasar variability things. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, sorry, I had to leave earlier yesterday. No, but, but thank you for introducing yourself. And sorry again about the name. Um, Chris, you're up next. Christoph. I don't know if you go by Chris. Christoph. You're muted? I think you're muted, or at least I cannot hear you. Doesn't look like you're muted though. Can, can anybody hear him? All right, I'll give you a second. I'll call on the next person uh, while you try and troubleshoot the issue. Uh, Marcus, you're up next. 
Yeah, so um, I just kind of can report in addition to what Janis has said that we also spent a good amount of time at the beginning to discuss a, our other in-kind contribution, which is to prepare a TVS user database, supporting group leads, subgroup leads, uh, my task force leads to manage the memberships. I also keep track of who's there, the affiliation, um, and to check if email addresses are still working and similar things. So uh, ideally that will be uh, avoid things like uh, the counting mistake I've made yesterday, just highlighting 250 instead of 350 TVS members. <laughs> Yes. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, let's do Ilaria. Uh, Ilaria, if uh, I, sorry, I said Naven. Sorry, in the chat, Thank I you. gave a heads up for Naven. So, and next Ilaria, and then we go back to Marcus. Naven, please go ahead. Okay. Hi, my name is Naven Kapla. So I'm a postdoc at Princeton University, and uh, but from September, I'll be moving to University of Washington. I'll be link fellow there with half of my time with uh, the, com and my purview is time domain. So that's why I joined this to hear what you're talking about. And then especially that in the future, we can co coordinate the efforts and make sure there are no overlaps and that we can make a good synergy between these projects and the projects which will be developing more within the link. Amazing. And then after this session, we'll talk about link specifically. So I'm very eager to hear your thoughts. Um, Ilaria? Do you hear me? Yes. Yes. Our in time project uh, on the database to simulate uh, pulsating star will start uh, next year. And uh, so I found a very interesting uh, uh, the discussion to participate the, the discussion about the period periodicity detection. And it was uh, very useful, uh, especially uh, I found very useful the discussion about uh, the different um, um, period recovery methods and uh, how to check the reliability of the recovered period. This was uh, very useful for me. That's it. Excellent, thank you so much. Um, Christoph, take two. Okay, hopefully you can hear me now. Good. Um, I started in Andreas' breakout room talking about TDEs. Um, very soon, Lovro joined, so we talked about Dash, um, what, uh, how we can, how we can use it. We talked a lot about the infrastructure behind it and how that's developing, and also uh, what Dash is not for. So it's not for a full analysis pipeline, but for like a quick look tool. And then I joined the OPM breakout room and followed the discussions there and uh, asked them questions about the storage uh, space. And today I'm hoping to talk to uh, Tim, Tom and Nina. Excellent. And uh, Lovro, you up next. Alex, you are after Lovro, and, but you also, if you wanna coordinate or share um, or tag team, that's also great. Right, thanks. So, uh... Alex and I were uh, assigned to the TVS dash room. We actually got, uh, well, at least in the first 20 minutes, only two visits there. So after that, I joined, uh, I tried to join all the other rooms and we had some useful discussions, uh, especially in Angelka and Dragana's room on the periodicity mining, which seemed to be one of the hubs uh, yesterday. So uh, I wrote down a couple of points that I found interesting. So first of all, we were interested whether other software contributors are interested in plugging, plugging in their products into the Dash. And uh, most of them are. And it seems that uh, the, the way that these would be plugged in is mostly in the form of a catalog. So uh, this is the apparently, apparently the most practical way. Uh, and uh, that there are very few things that could be actually calculated on the fly given the resources that we expect to have and all the difficulties that might exist with uh, increased bandwidth uh, storage requirements and so on. Uh, many of the users seem to be interested in uh, having a continuously updated white curves. So this would mean that after each data release, we would need to be listening uh, to the brokers and updating the light curves of the objects that uh, uh, are being uh, monitored. Uh, there were also uh, different requests from users in terms of how much quantity, uh, how large quantity of, of data would they 
uh, would, would they would be willing to uh, process. So most of the people would, of course, like to process the entire LS, Rubin LSST data set, but this is, of course, not going to be possible because the main goal of this tool was to actually allow a, a first look or a quick look into the data that uh, people might be interested in. So unfortunately, we don't see uh, a way how to provide enough computing resources to do all of the uh, processing within this framework, but it certainly flatters us in the sense that we found something that's interesting for people, but we just can't provide the computing power that's uh, required to do uh, this. Uh, and of course, the period finding uh, seems to be a recurring theme, especially in the uh, for the people that are working with uh, variable stars or periodic objects in general. So we are considering how to uh, include sort of an application that would compute the periods on the fly for the objects that are selected through our interface. And that I think sums it up. If Alex has something to add and that I missed. I'm yes, not... Alex, please. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, first of all, thanks Lovro for summing up essentially everything that can be said on Dash because Lovro most, uh, was mostly handling the Dash uh, breakout room. Uh, I've been sharing my time, spent some time in the uh, ML classification room. Um, where this, the discussion was circling mostly about quite typical for the machine learning and data science issues of uh, getting the right data, which are representative, which are easy to cross, cross match, basically. All the typical stuff, but in any case, uh, this is an important work that definitely has to be done at certain point, and it's good that we have stand, that we are thinking on it now. Uh, we've also discussed with uh, Robert Zabo and Takiwa Badi the possibility of um, including their classification and collaborating on unsupervised uh, machine learning classification, also for Dash uh, selection interfaces. So maybe there will be a collaboration in the future. Uh, and apart from that, I spent uh, obviously some time in uh, periodicity mining room because that, that's apparently where everyone was spending time yesterday. It was sort of a saloon. Uh, thank you to Dragana and Al Anjoka for uh, uh, providing such a lovely, lively space. Uh, I think that I basically second Dragana's suggestion that um, uh, using more uh, general um, conversation spaces is more practical in the sense that there is a lot of um, intersection and connection between different uh, task forces and sp splitting us all in very small groups seems to be not not very effective we, we are kind of gathering together uh, mm -hmm. intuitively and I also think that uh, one of the reasons why their room was the most effective and crowded is that they already had some quite specific results with, uh, I mean, plots and some measurements, etc. While most of the other projects for now are on a stage kind of uh, like uh, still thinking what we can do and how we can do it. So I think that uh, it is very important. It was said before, uh, we have to, to kind of prompt uh, people from from the facilities that will be providing us access to the data and uh, all the interfaces of uh, interacting with RSP. Uh, we have to talk to them a lot because they are, and these things are the main sources of uncertainty, which causing a stall in all other projects. I think that's all. Thank you, I really appreciate it. Um, Next, Vincenzo, can you go next? I'm not sure if you were in the breakout rooms. If you were, talk about that. If not, can you just introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, no, fortunately, yesterday I was able to, to, to attend the meeting. Right, right. I, I am involved in, uh, uh, especially in one in kind, uh, uh, devoted to the characterization and classification and validation of uh, variable objects, in particular pulsating stars. Uh, and uh, so, the, of course, uh, we, we will start uh, next year. I, 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 I co, uh, I'm copy I of this in kind with Gisela Clementine. And uh, we, we will, our intent, is, uh, uh, our aim is to export our experience gathered uh, with the, the, the same work uh, we did, uh, we are doing in Gaia. Uh, to to the, the to to the Rubin uh, data set. Thank so, you. Uh, Thank you so it. much. 
Uh, Mariano, can you go up next? Same deal. If you were in a breakout room, talk about that. If not, just introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. I'm sorry I cannot uh, join yesterday. I was organizing a seminar from desk on bias and pipelines. Uh, this is an open group that could be interesting people from from TBS uh, could join to, the, to these seminars. Also, I'm recovering from COVID. Uh, no. Uh, I've saw the, um, the videos, very, very interesting projects. I'm particularly interested on try to recover periodicity and signals at the magnitude limit. There are a lot of data there and um, uh, um, it's not clear for me uh, if we are leaving all this data uh, besides. Um, I hope to help with some of the projects that I saw yesterday. Excellent, thank you so much. Um, the last person I think to report, if I missed you, let me know instead, uh, except for Fabio who will go next on a different topic. Uh, so if I missed you, put something in the chat. Otherwise, the last person will be, but certainly not least, will be Massimo. Yeah, everybody. Uh, yesterday I was uh, talking to myself in, uh, in my room. So I decided to, uh, to join uh, Sarah and then we listened to the excellent presentation by Angelica very, very uh, powerful tool, and I was really impressed. Um, I was thinking about uh, a point probably common to all, uh, um, can be of interest to all the people uh, uh, interested in, uh, uh, in variable stars. And, uh, and this is the point, um, no, no doubt that after 10 years, we will have excellent light curves with super precise, periods, I mean, magnitudes, and so on. But probably uh, the competition, if I can use this word, uh, will be played in the first years of the, uh, of the, the survey. And when we will have uh, a few data, few epochs to, uh, to characterize, uh, recognize and characterize the, uh, for example, the pulsating stars or the eclipsing binaries or, or whatever. And so it could be interesting to understand which approach is able to uh, produce the most accurate uh, results with a few data points. I remember an uh, old paper by Madur, I guess, during the HST uh, key project uh, period, and uh, they showed that uh, 10, 15 data points uh, are enough to, uh, to produce accurate uh, light curves. I think that. Uh, this could be an interesting point. Okay, thank you. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, nobody told me that I missed them. So in that case, we, oh, Dragana. Uh, sorry, Fad, I just wanna add another thing that uh, I just wanna say uh, thank you to all the presenters for the videos. The short videos were amazing. I mean, it's a, such a great, uh, a great uh, legacy after this workshop to share with others, because uh, I, it was really inspirational. So definitely, it's a good format, like two, three minutes. It's it's perfect. Yes. Excellent. Thank so, you. Thanks for everyone. Thank you so much to you for the feedback and for reminding me to thank everybody who worked on that as well. We very much appreciate it. And I, I, I share Dragana's feeling it's an important legacy for TBS. So it's brilliant. Um, so next on the agenda, uh, we wanted to talk about link. Uh, let me just set the stage and very briefly introduce um, the link organizing team. So uh, link is an organization is a network of institutes that is um, supported by the Simon's Future Foundation through the LSST Corporation. It's a project, it's a sort of legacy project of the LSST Corporation that will, um, will connect with the various elements of the LSST, um, LSSTC um, ecosystem, including the Catalyst Fellowship and all the um, elements that they are trying to secure funds for. Um, and funds have been secured for the um, Link Institutions, which is a network of institutions. The current members are CMU um, and University of Washington, um, also North, Northwestern University and University of Arizona. And their 
charge is to build um, software uh, for the um, that will be um, usable by anybody interested in, in discovery through the LSST data. So software that adds on to the software stack um, that the data management team is building and that enable the analysis, a deeper analysis, a more specific analysis of the data. The only thing that I wanted to do before I pass the uh, virtual microphone um, to Fabio is to show um, a single slide from the LINK workshop, which we just had in New York um, at the CCA, the, the Center for Computational Astrophysics. And I wanna show this slide. Um, this is the summary slides, just to acknowledge all the sponsors and all the organizers of the workshop. So the leading, the leading um, mem the members of the leadership of, of LINK at this time are Andy Connolly and Rachel Mandelbaum. And uh, the organizers of the workshop include Katrina Alves, Alex Galliano, Jeremy Kubica, and Alex Mouth, as well as the local uh, members of the Flatiron, local members of the Flatiron Institutes. The Flatiron Institutes hosted the workshop. The Heisen Simons Foundation is uh, the foundation that supports the Flatiron Institute, and the Schmidt's Future Futures is the foundation that supports Link um, specifically. I will now let. Fabio, take it away from here. And Fabio, I didn't uh, call you up because I know you were not in the breakout rooms yesterday, but uh, so I'm gonna ask you to introduce yourself first and then tell us about Link from your perspective as a participant of the Thank workshop. You. Thank you, Federica. Uh, I'm gonna go on from that. I'm Fabio Ragosta. I'm working at the Observatory of Rome. I'm a member of TVS. I'm a, I'm a coordinator of the TVS Supernova Working Group. And I uh, took part to the workshop in New York. So I'm here now to uh, just give you a, a very fast, uh, you know, like summary of what we uh, what we did during the during that these days those days. Uh, so let me share the screen. I just prepared like a few um, few slides. Fabio, you muted yourself, or you are muted, or somebody muted you. You ended up being muted. Uh, I don't know. Uh, when I well, share the screen, screen, can you hear me? Yeah, we could see the screen correctly, but we couldn't hear you. Now we can hear you, but we don't see the screen anymore. OK, so it happened. Let me try again, because okay. when I. OK, so now we see the screen but we do not hear you. Do you wanna just show the, the slide deck without putting it in presentation mode? We could see it. Unless you're able to unmute yourself, but you uh, don't see the screen when you're on Google Docs, right? So that's the problem. Fabio, I don't know why when I, when I share uh, the screen. Hold on, if you prefer to share the slides with me, I can display them while you speak. Oh, I have the slides. Okay. Ah, Let me okay. hear my screen. How about we do it that way? <laughs> okay, perfect. All right, share. Bada bing, bada boom. Sorry, not what I wanted to do. Um, slide share. And <laughs> sorry, I'm spoiling the surprise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, so basically, at the the link work workshop. Um, was focused to, to, to set a discussion to how to go from the data to the science through uh, to build some infrastructures that still we miss. Uh, and so the, the central part of all the discussion during, during the days of the workshop were in this central area where there is this huge square uh, with nothing in it. So the, basically uh, we discussed uh, all the <clears throat> All the missing features that uh, uh, might be added to the uh, already set pipelines in the in Ruby. Can you go uh, to the next slide? 
how we did that. We started from the science. We discussed uh, through all the, coll the science collaboration that were represented by the, the people in the um, in the workshop, and then we uh, set the discussion on the infrastructure on the infrastructures. Uh, can you go to the next slide? So uh, we built like science cases uh, that was uh, on the part of the science, uh, extra extragalactic science such as variable transient static uh, uh, science, and same for the local universe. Uh, then we uh, we had also breakout rooms of, for solar system and cosmology, um, and then. Uh, from these science cases, we extrapolate what we need to um, to set the the discussion on the technical uh, on on the technical issues. So, uh, what what are what were the <clears throat> similarities uh, from between the science cases uh, from the technical aspect? So, what can what are, what are the infrastructures that are uh, the most uh, uh, in, you know, let's say interdisciplinary uh, between uh, you know, across all the science cases, and we uh, said that so to, these teams uh, catalog plus mass matching time series, uh, and we uh, focused time series on visualization, anomaly detection, feature extraction, and parametric uh, estimation, the photo Z, the selection function, the reprocessing images, and the image classification. Uh, these uh, breakout rooms, can you go on the next slide? These breakout rooms uh, were, <clears throat> were um, you know, had as a, as a goal, they had the, um, these, deli these deliverables, such mm -hmm. as these uh, tables, uh, where you can see what are the, um, you know, the, the common features between science cases uh, for for instance, uh, as you can see, um, you know the cross the, the color cross match uh, would be uh, is a is an important is an important uh, topic not just for um, you know vari variability or uh, um, explosive transient to be to be located in the uh, in, you know in in the, in, this, in the history of detection, but also for uh, the galactic morphology, low mass stars, the mapping on the Milky Way. And if you go to the next slide, you see another uh, table as such um, that produce the same kind, you know, the same kind of the analysis, but for the technical cases. So what are the derival the the derival the derival the real so the data products from the uh, <laughs> uh, from the softwares that we that we can develop uh, for the um, for what are the uh, the issues that we um, that we that we saw uh, in the discussion uh, from the science cases um, and if you go to the other to, to the next slide you can see uh, some some basic um, you know the the, the the four steps of our dis the discussion so we started from the software that exists we, uh, we step on the, the functionality that, it, that was missing, and we discuss on how, uh, how the new data products uh, need to be stored and the volume product that, that uh, will be produced. Uh, and we did for the different area of the technical uh, of the technical aspect. So for the image processing, and if you go uh, on the next slide, you will see the, uh, the the another example for the selection function. Um, all these. Uh, uh, all this discussion was not, uh, of course, um, left, you know, um, left by by themselves. In, in the in the uh, in the next slide, we um, if you go to the next slide, please. Uh, all this uh, all this uh, discussion were uh, included in the, um, uh, in an, in a white paper uh, where everything we talked about is summarized. Um, and um, the, uh, the the all the all the workshop was uh, was not entirely uh, focused on just science and technical issues, but also on the uh, on a way to um, to prompt inclusive collaboration, uh, and that is, is also an important part of the uh, of, of the white paper. Uh, there is a there would be like a, a section dedicated to that. To promote the discussion on the, on good practices for inclusivity, and you know, this is my fast 
and <laughs> very very fast <laughs> summary on, uh, on on everything. But if you need some details, please ask, and uh, I will try to answer your questions. Brilliant. So, in fact, let's open the floor for questions. And again, the reason why we wanted to, uh, what do you think about your question formulated in your head? I see you, Laura. Uh, the reason why we wanted to have a discussion of Link, I mean, there is an obvious and very clear connection, right? So we have a bunch of teams that are building software, whether as in-kind contributions or because they want to build a software for TVS. And there is an organization that is building software. So clearly we should work closely together and we should uh, cooperate and minimize duplicating efforts as much as possible. Um, and thankfully and luckily, both organizations are really designed, TVS and Link, really designed to incorporate, to support and foster collaboration as much as possible. And with that, Lovro, you had your hand up. Uh, thanks, uh, Ben. So I just, uh, I'm not sure if I maybe missed uh, if this was already said, but how does one join or get in touch with the link people and who can join? Uh, yeah, okay. Um, I think that old people, uh, you know, the white paper is, um, is I, I, I know that white paper um is related to old people that joined the uh, the workshop but all the discussion and the uh and the collaboration uh is uh, is actually open to everyone that want to join the collaboration so if you have some uh, some common interests on one of these aspects uh you can um you know you can touch bases with the organizer of the um, of the link workshop uh, and they can actually uh, you know set a bridge to to contact the uh, let's say the PI of the uh, of this of these sections of the white paper uh, to open the conversation for collaboration and let me perhaps add a bit um, just to clarify so Link is the name, and I, I'm, I'm really sorry, but I don't remember what the acronym stands for. Ooh, maybe Nevin remembers, but if he does LSST not... Interdisciplinary Network for Computing and 1C, I'm missing. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll ping you back about the last bit. Uh, so it's that they have an acronym. <laughs> right? So Link has an, is an is a network of institutions, right? So the institutions are members of the LSST corporation that has secured the funds for LENG. So with this, I wanna say, it kind of depends on what you mean by join. So there's institutions that are LENG hosts, they receive support and they provide support. They receive support from the, the Smith's Future Foundation and they provide support for the members of LINK that are hosted there uh, in terms of physical space, in terms of uh, positions at those institutions, et cetera. So, you know, Nevin said he is going to UW to be a LINK postdoc. Um, but the connection between LINK and the science collaborations in particular is very strong. And so if by, link, by, by join, you mean, how do I, how do I get involved? I, I, I understand fully. You don't need to explain. No, no, no. But, but I think it's important. I think it's an important distinction for everybody. I know that you are, um, you're, you're aware of this also from the corporation side. But uh, so if by joining side you mean, uh, you know, how do I connect with them because I'm building software that is that I'm that is relevant to that is relevant that is similar that is in their, uh, that is um, connected with what i know they're building or because i'm building software that i think they should get involved with or because i'm building software and i want the support of their uh, postdocs or software engineers um, that is a different story and so those communication like it's really embedded in the science collaborations in that sense so we really can connect to build software together thank you <laughs> Mariano, your hand is up. Right, thank you. Uh, I would like to know about um, and link. I understand that uh, we call an instance yet uh, some machine in the, in the cloud, but I don't know, or I, I can find uh, which kind of data we could use uh, there for um, developing code. 
Uh, for instance, I'm comparing against uh, the Rubin Science Platform, where there are a lot of tutorials uh, where how to access the, the DC2 data and this kind of stuff. Uh, I, I suppose that there will be some somewhere, but uh, could you point me some Burning. about that? Yes, so if, if I understand correctly uh, the question, um, the, the data that can be used now for all the, um, for testing all the, all the machinery um, are, you know, um, simulated, the, the one simulated, the metadata simulated by the, the OpSIMS team, but also uh, are, you know, the same, there is the same strategy can that, it, that is used by the broker the broker system team that you know uh, some of them are using ZTF uh, data database uh, to ex, you know to uh, to access like uh, alerts uh, or um, data from observed uh, observed uh, event and test the machinery on this kind of data. Um, I hope these answer your question. That's what I- There was a bit of noise in your connection. So yeah. I'm actually, uh, let us know if we understood the question correctly. But me, uh, can you hear me now better? It's very distorted. Oh, sorry. So now? It's more or less the same. Oh, sorry. Uh, maybe right on the, on the chat. Right? Thank you. Okay, and thank you. So let me add, there's no data that is specific to link. There's also no link software yet, right? Because the, 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 the institution has just been funded. The organization has just been funded and is starting the planning phase and started the planning phase with this workshop. Well, started the planning phase and in the very early stages, this workshop was one of the main events of um, the planning for link. So there's no link specific, link built software yet, that's yet to come. Um, and, and so the data that you would use is the same data that we have for testing all of our Ruby resources, right? Precursor data sets, as well as synthetic data that has been right now made, provided by the desk through the, um, the data challenge tool. Right, so no link specific data and nothing that is accessed through link because link is, remember, just a network of institutions, right? There will be link made software, which will be accessible through the science platform because it's an, it's an, it's an LSST, um, it's embedded in LSST quite deeply, right? So the software will likely be, will be designed for the Rubin Science Platform, will, will likely be primarily accessible through the Rubin Science Platform, et cetera. Although that's not a requirement per se. Um, any other questions? If not, I would like to hear from Naven what he thinks of this discussion so far. No, well, I don't, you know, again, I, I am just trying to get through osmosis as much information as, as possible and hear what the questions are. I'm also a little bit vague exactly how everything will work. So that's why I'm also exactly just trying to gather information and, and make sure that, you know, in the future when we have the people that I know who are the right people to get in touch with. Mariano, your hand is still up or is it residually up? Residually up. All right. Uh, perhaps time for one more question before we go into the breakout rooms. If there are none then it's breakout room time. So we move on to Gather Town. Uh, I expect people may want a quick break. Um, so try to be on Gather Town within five or 10 minutes. Rachel? Uh, so are we going to the same breakout rooms for the different topics as we had before that are in the spreadsheet, just so people know where to go? Because uh, not everybody was here yesterday, they may not have that spreadsheet. That's a good point. Um, how about, yes, uh, let's use the spreadsheet that we had used yesterday so we don't run a lengthy exercise of reassigning things. Uh, maybe software teams starting that breakout room, hang out there for a few minutes, 
And then um, I will update the spreadsheet to look at the people that were indicated as the main contact, but that might no longer be there and reach out to those teams to replace them with some other names. Okay. One other great quest before we go. Uh, for everybody who was presenting slides at uh, in this session, uh, I would like to share these slides on the meeting website by way of having content that other people can uh, look at and refer to after the event. So if you're willing for me to share your slides like that, please send them to me and I will post them on the website. Thank you. All right. So grab a cup of coffee. Please head to the breakout room in five, 10 minutes and please hang out in your assigned room for a few minutes before you move on to join other groups to give me time to update the spreadsheet. And if you have any, if you're not in the spreadsheet and you want me to add you uh, at a specific room, let me know, okay?